about. The only anime I've been keeping up with is One Piece. Okay, okay, loving, loving the One Piece. Are you so you're up to date on One Piece? Uh, on the anime, yes. I, I'm super behind on the manga, but yeah. someday I'll, I'll have to go back and read them. Like, I'm always going to keep, I think, my older videos up, even though they're very awkward and like I have no lighting or anything, but it really just shows the growth of what sure. you can do with just um, practicing. What is the area or topic that excites you the most in terms of making that video? Because obviously you cover quite, quite a lot. Yeah, um, I personally really like, I guess, more educational-centered videos, so I really mm. like um, the kind of the nerdy stuff about game collecting. Sure. The RPG, the One Piece RPG is coming out, are you looking forward to that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You mean Odyssey? It came out mm. yeah, earlier this year. I oh, have it, yeah. I just need to play it. <laughs> oh, I see. Maybe maybe I'm way behind on my, my video um, outlook. It came out in January. It was like one of the <laughs> first releases of the year. Except um, they came out, I think, with a new story. Um, there was some new DLC, I think, that came out within the last month. Right. The huge arenas and stadiums. So that was really cool to see that side of them. But yeah, their uh, American songs were not my favorite. <laughs> not at all. That's not even <laughs> Hello YouTube, so me and Zaki Mansai here and we've got another great episode with Orbalology, the wonderful Emily. I hope you guys enjoyed the very first episode. This is episode 2 of a three part series. In fact, the last clip you just saw there, third part, we go all into J-pop, K-pop, the idol scene, my goodness, proper geeking it out. And speaking of geeking it out, it's amazing to find somebody you feel so comfortable with that you can just chit chat nerd out for days and literally we just sat here talking about our favorite figures games rpgs i was even opening the byleth figure box because last time she showed me the quality of that byleth figure and i knew i had to open mine up so i spent the first half of this video literally trying to get it out of the box <laughs> If you like this video please remember to hit the like button and subscribe as well if you haven't already helps this video get seen please comment below what else you want me to chat with emily about because it was a great time so without further ado let's get on with the show make sure to check out orbalology channel afterwards she definitely deserves it hey everyone welcome back to the miyazaki man podcast delighted to be joined by emily again how are you doing today great great happy to be back Absolutely loving it. And ever since uh, the last um, episode very shortly ago, the Nintendo Direct occurred. So how how's your kind of feedback and review of, of that event? I know you made a video already. Yeah, I did do, a, I guess, a chill reaction. I'm not a, a big reactor, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I went in it not really with many expectations. There were so many, you know, rumors circulating. Mm. So I think most people had an idea if they were on the Internet, what was going to come out. Yeah. Um, but I think there was a good release, um, very, um, I think it'll appeal to a lot of different people. So there were some mm. like RPGs, a lot of Mario, which is great. Yes. And uh, Pikmin and, you know. That's true. That's true. Very diverse. Something for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I think that I'd go along with that for sure. And um, the one that really caught my attention is uh, I'm a massive fan of Super Mario RPG, Legend of the Seven Stars, mm -hmm. original game. So really excited for that one. Have you played that one? No, I didn't actually have a lot of the Nintendo consoles back in the day, so okay. that was one I missed. So I'm excited for that remake too. Yeah, finally experienced really it, and yeah. all the rave reviews I've always hear about it. Absolutely, it's it's basically a real feel good game. So when you get into it, you can pick it up any time, and it's not you know not so kind of dramatic or emotional. Or, you know, some of the, the real kind of hardcore RPGs, but it's just outright fun, and the characters are lovable, and the story is so quacky but really entertaining. It's it's a really fun game. Yeah. <laughs> And what's also exciting about that is that we have Square Enix and Nintendo working together again yeah. and releasing that remake. So hopefully that means like Xenogears or some of those other games mm. might come to light too. <laughs> that is true. That, I didn't even think about that. That's very, very true. And that game holds like a special place in my heart because um, coming from the UK with the original um, UK version, the PAL version of the, the Super Nintendo, I don't think that got released on that version, but because my dad no. did um, import, he had an import games shop back in the day, I think the first one in Cambridge, I actually had like an American Super Famicom, so I managed to get that Mario game and you know, I was like the cool kid because I was like having all the exclusives from the American version. <laughs> That's right. And that was, yeah, back when it was all region free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, okay. <laughs> true that, true that. Yep, so let's get back onto the uh, the figure topic. So with your Byleth, my goodness, I, I had to um, bring mine out to unbox mine because, yeah, she looked absolutely amazing when you when you previewed her. So without further ado, do you, do you keep your boxes, by the way? I do, I do, um, for moving purposes. Yeah, yeah, makes sense, makes sense to me. 
I um, unfortunately don't have the, the space to really keep the, the boxes and keep them pristine condition. So like the only real benefit for me would be when I'm transporting the figures possibly to the new uh, house, then, you know, I don't need to bubble wrap them. But uh, all in all, I don't know. I feel you only need to keep the boxes for those that perhaps some people want to sell or to retain the value or or that kind of thing. Do you keep it for, for that purpose or mainly just as a kind of a souvenir or heirloom to, you know, the original figure? So I don't really collect for, I guess, value. I'm the mm -hmm. same with my games and sure. the other things I collect. Um, but there is some like nice, it's nice to have like that, um, the fan art it's inspired by, you yeah. know, on the side of the box. Um, That's true. But yeah, other than that, it, it goes in the closet. So it's like sight unseen. <laughs> so um, if you don't have any plans to like move long distance or anything yeah. like that, um, it might not be, or to resell, of course, um, of might course. not be worth keeping. Exactly, exactly. But what come what happens when you come to this point five years down the line and you run out of closet space and you run out of floor space and then the new boxes come through? What's the decision going to be then? Uh, that's difficult. Um, there might have to be some, uh, you know, purging of the collection. That's something that I've had to do for uh, previous collections. I'm actually a big K-pop collector too. So I had to do a yeah. huge purge when I moved. <laughs> um, and I felt a lot better after kind of, you know, uh, cultivating that. Just Yes the set things I wanted. Um, but the figure collecting, I've been trying to be more, you know, um, deliberate with which ones I pick mm. up so I don't have to sell them because that that's a big pain that I've learned over the years. Reselling is not fun. Yep, that's true. That's but, true. It can be painful and it's time yeah. intensive as well to, to put it them up for is, And sometimes you just hold on to stuff. Um, if you're like other people might not like lose interest, you know, mm. like uh, but maybe it was popular back in the day, but not anymore. And so you just kind of hold on to it. And if you're not like willing to like drop the price by a, mm. a, a ton, you might yeah. like keep it around. <laughs> Exactly, but exactly. Anyway. And actually, that, that brings up a good point, because there's something that you do that I think a lot of people struggle to do, is you're very big up on the curated, curated collection, right? So um, give me give me advice for how you go about um, doing the curation of, of your collection and the, the hard decisions that uh, come along with it. <laughs> uh, it's something I still struggle with. Um, like, I just first start with, I guess, being very deliberate with your initial purchases. But, you yes. know, as we um, grow with our collections, um, our thoughts and feelings for certain things might change as mm. well, which is totally natural. Um, so um, I do like to do the Marie Kondo uh, oh, sort yes. of thing. Um, actually, I just released a video about um, downsizing and um, my uh, video game collection, and how I like to go about it. So I like to take everything off the shelves and then go one by one to see what I think about the game and if I want to put it back on the shelf or not. I like so that. I, I like of, that for sure. I, I think kind of doing that act just really helps um, put like some perspective. If yes. it's something you want to hold on to or you want to like trade or give away or something to free up space or more funds to buy something that would um, hold more meaning to you. So. Yeah, yeah, no, makes sense to me, makes sense. And I, I love how you brought up Maria Kondo because uh, uh, I'm actually gonna make a video um, sometime down the line because I asked a lot of the big kind of figure review, unboxing, collecting YouTubers, one piece of advice on how, when I finally do get around to organizing my collection, what would they recommend to um, basically make this, this mess presentable? So in your your opinion, what would be the, the one facet that would really kind of upgrade the, the backdrop, the scenery, the organized kind of chaos? What would you recommend? Uh, what do you mean by upgrade? Like, um, so literally, like I've, how to I've present put, and display everything? Exactly. I've just put figures okay. anywhere there's floor space or vertical space at the moment because um, literally I have no space. But when I do get around to actually yeah. thinking about how I want to present it, what would be your kind of recommendation for making it, you know, pop out and making it like really resonate and really stand out as opposed to just being clumped together? I see. Um, so I guess what I like to do in my collections is I like to group like like things together. So I mm. have like. Um, I guess you can see here, like I have a little one piece area and a little bit of um, an atelier area. And so um, I, I like to kind of theme things around it. So not only like you bring in figures, but you can bring in like maybe your um, wall scrolls and other sure. kind of cool things that you've picked up along the way to kind of mm. make a cool uh, little curated display, I guess. Yeah, um, yeah. And so that kind of, I, I feel like that kind of enhances the figures and mm. just the overall kind of way that they're displayed together. That makes sense to me. And actually, maybe maybe that is something I can offer you then, because I do have a few Atelier wall scrolls as well, which I, I can dig out. I can let you have a look-see, and maybe you can put it behind the shelf, and you can see, like, Sophie or Ryza or someone pop out through the window. 
<laughs> yeah, that might be fun. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be cool. Yeah, yeah. It's always tricky to do that with these shelves, but um, <laughs> we'll see. Because <laughs> some of those like wall scrolls are huge. Like, they can be. Uh, yeah, I don't know if they'll work so much with my setup, but um, yep, yeah, I could see. Maybe hang it on the door or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for I have sure. one um, Rise of a uh, cloth poster I've been meaning to hang up somewhere uh, that oh. I got in the Rise of 3 um, premium box. She's so really popular nice. right now, Riza, obviously because of her, um, I would love to say bubbly, bubbly personality, but her voluptuous body is definitely um, a great marketing tool. Riza, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's definitely that aspect, but I do like her personality too. I think she's adorable. So I think she does have that appeal for both guys and girls in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> a, bit of, a bit for everyone, yeah, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. And she has uh, anime coming up too. Yeah, the size, the size of the war scrolls is actually something um, very interesting because I think Riser has a life-size war scroll. Now, these things are absolutely gigantic. Oh, gosh. Have you ever seen a life-size war scroll? Uh, I don't think so, other than, I guess the closest is those pillows, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, the Dakimakura. Would you ever get one of those uh, husbando or waifu Dakimakura pillows? Uh, I haven't been tempted yet. <laughs> Maybe <it's tempted. laughs> Which character? Which character would be the one that might uh, pique your interest? Oh, I don't know. Um, I guess my favorite character of all time is Estelle Bright from the Trail series. Mm. Um, I don't know if they've made one of her yet. I don't know. I, I might do some digging. It might not be <laughs> officially Hanzanzo's, licensed. I don't know. Maybe Crow from Trails too. <laughs> oh, that'd be a good choice. Yeah, yeah. A big huggable Crow. <laughs> Yep, yep. I'm excited for his figure. He's coming next month. Oh, really? <laughs> mm -hmm. Good stuff. I like I like the sound of it. How how is your um? I know you've got your my figure collection page, and I can see the the pre orders on on there. But are uh, is that up to date? Do you, do you maintain that um uh that collection series on there? So everything you order, you put on it straight away. Um, I do it in waves. Uh, <laughs> so right now it's up to date. Except, uh for. The figure I just told you before the show started. <laughs> That's yeah, funny. yeah, the um, last one in there. I've, um, you know, I, I've had a lot of discussions with some of the other figure collectors around the, the state of, of pre-ordering, and I've really kind of come to the conclusion that, um, like, figures were booming during the kind of pandemic, and everyone's getting on board and, and really hyped for them. But lately, because it's become a little bit saturated in terms of how many figures are coming out and the competitive. Um, kind of studios a lot of figures as you know they're kind of dropping in the aftermarket or they're absolutely bombing so you've got to make a conscious decision right do i need to pre-order them in which case you know with ami ami you can cancel them anytime before the invoice or do i wait until the aftermarket risk maybe it not being available or competitive or the price going up but i think a lot of figures the price are going down have you found that yeah definitely um like we were discussing that last time with the Fire Emblem figures, um, the yes, first few that yeah. they're coming out with um, the past year, all kind of tanked in the aftermarket. That's and then right. they started doing, I guess, exclusives like uh, with uh, Roy and... Uh, um, Lelina. Though. And Lelina, yes, uh, her figure. So I don't think that will probably tank because it's the they closed the orders for that pretty quickly, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah makes yeah. sense, makes sense, I guess. But I did um, pre-order Corrin. Oh, yeah, no, of course, that, that was beautiful. I love that Corrin with, with purple yes. crystal, yeah? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. She looks gorgeous. Um, and it doesn't look like she'll take up too much space, so I felt comfortable <laughs> pre-ordering her. That's true, her. that is true. But I guess the other side of the coin when it comes to um, pre-ordering figures is, um, at least um, for international fans, uh, the exchange rate and how that's going to change over time. So sometimes you can lock in a pre-order like up front. Like I like to do that on Amazon Japan. I like to buy gift cards yes. and to lock in that conversion rate. Mm. Um, because um, you don't, it's kind of a gamble to wait a year to see where the uh, yen and uh, in my case, USD ends up. Yes. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Yeah. You've got to account for the exchange rate. Do you need to pay um, tax or customs or anything when they arrive? Or? Uh, and the US is very generous. Um, I, I looked into this. Um, I think if you have something that's like over 800, mm. you might get some like custom fees depending okay. on who you ship through. But, um, and definitely I think after like a thousand, yeah. but um, e everything else um, under that is usually fine. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Good to know because it would absolutely murder me the amount that i've bought over the years if i had to pay like shipping and customs on on top of that you know internationally it literally like double the you know the costing of the, of the figure right yeah 
Yeah, and I saw um, during the pandemic when, um, for example, like Canada, like they were only doing DHL shipping and that was like yeah. through the roof for a lot of mm. bigger collectors. So that's that was very unfortunate for them during that time. I know, I know what you mean. And I guess one thing that's quite good because you mentioned amazon.co.jp, don't they um, front load all of the costs up front so you know exactly how much you're yeah, going to pay? Yeah, you can lock in the uh, shipping rate too, which yeah. I really like to have that just up front so I know what to expect. And I like yeah. to also pre-order or put a lot of things in my cart because um, they're very um, generous when it comes to yes. like large bundles and they mm. ship out everything um, whenever they come out so true true it's not true. like you have to and wait um, for everything to arrive and then they ship it one big unboxing one big unveiling <laughs> 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 love it, love it. And actually, not, it's good to use Amazon.co.jp because um, this might be a good one for you to, to bookmark. So Black Friday, Japan's version of, of Black Friday, right? You're going to see some of the most ridiculously generous deals for figures that you've ever seen because like even exclusive and licensed resin statues. So there was this big um, League of Legends resin statue for, for Kaisa, which I think it's like retailing $1,600 or something. And then it actually was on Black Friday for $600, less than half price. And I was like, wait a minute, this this can't be right. This has got to be some scam or bootleg or something. But it's sold officially from amazon.co.jp. No reviews or anything, so you take a punt. But when it arrived, it even gives you the actual batch number because they've only made a limited quantity. So you can get some really good figure deals on, on Japan Black Friday. Yeah, I'm kind of kicking myself. I saw that they heavily discounted Marth for Fire Emblem. Oh, yeah during that sale and then I didn't hop on it fast enough and I think oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know for next time <laughs> but yeah like he's still easily attainable so it wasn't too bad big of a deal yeah, but yeah yeah true that what, what is the um kind of decision so the, the kind of figurines that you want to get but you didn't quite pull the trigger yet what is it that would bring you to the limit is it the urge and itch to suddenly unbox something because you haven't got something lately or is it a price point or what would tip you over the edge to actually make that purchase I like to weigh a lot of factors. Um, it has to be a character or a franchise I hold dear. <laughs> mm. um, and then also I like to factor in uh, just kind of like general what my, I guess, hobby spending is during yes. that like interval. Um, I like to do like the sinking fund approach. So I kind of know up front what I should save like a little okay. bit each month. Um, That's good. To do. Uh, Except, I guess, when it comes to some of the pre owned stuff, I, yeah. that's all at once. So, um, <laughs> I have to be careful with those. <laughs> it can can build up rapidly when you start adding stuff to the cart pre-owned. For sure. Um, and yeah, because I buy so many games and mm. um, some other things that I have to be really careful. Um, I, I'm very big about budgeting and keeping track of my finances. So very good. I have spreadsheets. Smart girl. <laughs> smart. Very smart. That actually leads on quite nicely as well then because your your youtube has quite a, a variety of of different kind of let's say genres or niches or topics that you know you go into and i, I think majority of viewers are mainly a fan of you which why is why video on video you know they'll still uh follow on on anything that you're interested in but in terms of you making an actual video what is the area or topic that excites you the most in terms of making that video because obviously you cover quite quite a lot yeah um I personally really like, I guess, more educational centered videos. So I really mm. like um, the kind of the nerdy stuff about game collecting. Sure. And so I like to kind of just share, I, I'm a researcher by trade. So okay. I like to research my hobbies too a lot extensively. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so um, any kind of cool thing I learned, um, like I think last time I told you about the revised uh, switch carts. Yes. Like that was a really cool discovery I made that I wanted to share with others. That's um, very so cool. I really yeah, like yeah. making that sort of content. Oh, that's good. And then that's I also good. just like to just document my journey and mm. kind of um, when it comes to collecting and things I'm interested in. And I, yep, I yep. think other it's been it's had a good response, which I was surprised by, but um, or pleasantly surprised by. So that's that's the best way, isn't it? It's because like you yeah. make the content that you enjoy, that you're proud of. You want to kind of um, make it a library of your own growth and your own journey. And you can look back on it as well. And you know, can yeah, see yeah. how you developed over time and people following you on that journey as well and kind of supporting you and cheering you on. And that's a r real motivator and feel good factor, right? Because it's for yourself, for but sure. also people are enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, that's been really super encouraging. Um, I've actually been a little overwhelmed lately by comments and trying to respond to everyone um, before I try to respond to all the comments, but um, it's hard to keep up with <laughs> these days. Um, but um, yeah, that was one of the main motivators actually for making my channel 
was I wanted to interact with the community and like-minded yeah. people. So mm. I, I'm really glad to have found so many so far. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. And not just like the, the followers, right? As you mentioned, the community. Aren't the people in the kind of JRPG, RPG kind of community, aren't they lovely? They're really, really nice, right? Yeah, yeah. It's been so nice to get to know them better, um, especially through like collaborations and just casually chatting on Discord. Yes, yes, absolutely. I, I hear you out. Yeah, so many of them. Um, I, I've bounced ideas off in, in the last uh, few months, especially the kind of figuring out game show where you see the in <laughs> the competitive side <laughs> of, of people. <laughs> That's <was> really fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't envy them trying to think on the spot like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've got to appear on one, surely. We've got to do like a oh, gaming gosh. girl special. <laughs> That'd be awful. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see it. <laughs> oh, no, I love it. Love and also, it, my, I would just say my JRPG knowledge is that extensive, especially not the more historical side. Yeah, they love but. their retro. A lot of the guys, they love their retro stuff. So it's uh, been very yeah. fascinating to hear. Yeah, and it's great. Like, so many of them just grew up with it um, when mm. that was, you know, relevant. And I kind of came into it kind of slowly and a little bit mm. later, I would say. Sure, Love sure, it. indeed, indeed. Everyone, you know, has an entry point into the series because I did like um, a podcast with Miss Bubbles um, mm -hmm. recently, and uh, she mentioned that uh, her dad got her into gaming and she started with platform games, but now she really doesn't like platform games. She's all about the kind of RPGs and hardcore stuff. So you, your tastes evolve really over time, doesn't it? Certainly, yeah, yeah. I actually got into gaming through my dad too. That that was more through like educational point and click games. <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, um, and then it, it slowly came into like um, the Game Boy kind of era and then the PS2 yeah. area with the era with the 3D platformers mm. and Keen Parts was my one of my first JRPG kind of franchises. Oh, and, okay. Yeah. That's cool. No, that's cool for sure. And I guess like for all the good things about the JRPG world and the kind of community, right? So let's say, for example, everyone plays a particular game. Let's say Final Fantasy 16 coming out. Everyone can go through the same experience, go through the same story, character, music, whatever. But everyone gets a, their own personal kind of memories or mementos or, or you know, feedback and reactions on, on the video and uh, sorry, the game. And it's quite quite unique. Everyone has a chance, no matter where they are in the world, to go through that same experience. And it's something that you can share and, you know, elaborate on with people and discuss. And But people, you know, strongly disagree sometimes as well, right? That's part of the community. Some people are very passionate. Yeah, yeah that's, I think, any major fandom. You'll have, you know, conflicting ideas and thoughts. Um, hopefully it's, you know, uh, respectful that people have different <laughs> opinions. But it's not, not always the case, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I like that aspect too, especially about RPGs in general. Like mm. there's really cool mechanics often, but really the stories and characters, I think what is the main part that appeals to people, I think in this genre. And um, you could definitely, I think, take different aspects from different characters and their kind of mm. growth and progression through the story in a different way and relate it back to your life sometimes or yes. other things that we've consumed before, you know? Yeah, that's oh, true. That's yeah. true. And I guess like you get a lot out of um, JRPGs, the kind of character growth and decisions they make and the kind of uh, key moments in the game that can really affect you emotionally, affect your mood as well. So like my favorite game, Genzo Sukud, and so many memories. As soon as that music hits or anything like that, you get certain feels and your mood lifts or you get like epic or you want to pump some iron in the gym or something, you know, depending on the, on the beats that come on. Do you listen to music a lot to like really enhance your mood? Yeah, um, I've actually been diving more into uh, RPG soundtracks um, oh, cool. and starting to buy them <laughs> um, yeah, so I can yeah. just listen to them casually and not just have to re like rely on what's on Spotify or on YouTube. Um, oh, yeah, 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 for sure. It's um, I think some of the, the music even transcends like the gaming scene because I remember mm -hmm. um, Final Fantasy X, some of the, the vocal tunes on that even made like the top 10 lists in, you know, like J-pop and, and other stuff. They actually went into kind of mainstream music. So it's like really breaking the boundaries and like Persona 5 really broke the boundaries, right? That's everywhere plastered in Japan right now. Oh, I imagine. Yeah. Um, it's It became really popular out here in the West too. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah true. I think and, like... music is really an important part for JRPGs for sure. Yeah, yeah. And um, speaking on that note, do you, do you watch anime as well? I do, though I haven't. It's been hard to juggle everything <laughs> between <Yes. laughs> games and my other hobbies. So it's been a bit on the back burner, but I've been trying mm. to find um, or try out some of the new shows I've been hearing about. The only anime I've been keeping up with is One Piece. Okay, okay. Loving, loving the One Piece. Are you, so you're up to date on One Piece? Uh, on the anime, yes. I, I'm super behind on the manga, but yeah. someday I'll, I'll have to go back and read them. 
that's true that's true i need to catch up on my one piece like my mate um derek is, is super big into one piece and i'm really enjoying like some of the uh, one piece resin statues and, and things that's coming up but you really need a big time commitment because it's such a big long series <laughs> it is actually i started it in grad school um oh. a few years back <laughs> and um, a friend introduced it to me and um yeah i was really hesitant to get into it because at that time it was um it was like maybe 700 plus episodes yes <laughs> like how would i get into this sort of huge <laughs> series and find all the time for that but it's possible <laughs> Yeah, it's just... definitely definitely possible. And um, yeah, as you mentioned, breaking kind of the the mainstream kind of anime and manga, the RPG, the One Piece RPG is coming out. Are you looking forward to that? Uh, yeah, yeah. You mean Odyssey? It came out hmm. yeah earlier this year. I oh, have it. Cool. I just need to play it. <laughs> oh, I see. Maybe maybe I'm way behind on my my video um, outlook. It came out in January. It was like one of the <laughs> first releases of the year. <laughs> Except um, they came out, I think, with a new story. Um, there are some new DLC, I think, that came out within the last month right. or two. Ah, okay, okay. No, I, I must be way behind because I was um, I had a compilation of the things to look forward to in 2023, and it was on there. So I was like, oh, that's going to be really good. But it was in Japanese, so my broken Japanese struggled to absorb fully what they uh, were explaining. <laughs> yeah, but I played the demo. The demo's great. Um, if you're a One Piece oh. fan, I think there's just so many uh, cool moments they captured. Mm. Um, like, and you get to play as a um, bunch of different, you know, characters, and yes. um, it's really cool to see how they animated their, um, uh, you know, combat moves mm. um, during those sequences. That makes sense. That so makes yeah, I'm sense excited to, to get to that one. I bought it for the PS5 before I bought a PS5. <laughs> so it's just been in my backlog for a bit. <laughs> that is dedication. So you got the game before you actually got the console. I, I was tempted by the steel book, to be honest. <laughs> I didn't need to pre-order it because... A lot of those PlayStation games, they plummet like yeah. in, after like a month or two. But mm. um, yeah, I needed that steel book that's I, I guess shown up there. Yeah, yeah, very good, very good <laughs> centerpiece. I like it. I like it a lot. And in terms of like um, uh, the direction of, of the kind of channel, so is there any big ambitious project? Is there something that you wanted to tackle, like something that would take longer than the traditional video, but you just haven't got around to yet? I've been dabbling in maybe doing some Let's Plays or Ooh. i don't know if i want to do streaming um yeah. because i do like having or just playing games you know by myself mm -hmm. and not sure. having to i guess entertain mm. i don't think i'm that like entertaining of a personality to be able to do that and it takes a lot of energy <laughs> i think to be on that side of the camera you know while playing yeah consistency they the expect community. you as well yeah interaction and the consistency yeah. they want you to stream this time every week and they're looking forward to your appearance and that kind of thing exactly yeah mm. so um i might be something i dabble in um, I think a Let's Play is probably a bit more obtainable at this point. So it's something yeah. I've been looking into. Yeah, no, that sounds sounds great to me because then you can control it at your own pace and, you know, you can still enjoy the game and then you can uh, do what you need to do to make the, the kind of video presentable because, like, you're, you're completely right. I've talked to some people who stream and they feel as though, like, they really enjoyed it at the start. It was exciting, but then it felt like more like a commitment. They really had to do it even when they didn't feel like doing it and had to be exciting it, yeah, and smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah burnout they get burnout <laughs> that's the long and short of it yeah yeah that's true that's true and in terms of like um the things you've you've done already on on the channel and, and growing the kind of community do you see similar sort of people comment video on video do you recognize do you start to recognize the names that appear yeah i think um i get a lot of yeah repeat commenters and i also interact with many of them on twitter okay. so um i'm gonna Hopefully open up a Discord soon to interact with whoever wants to interact with me on there as well. But yeah, yeah um, as long as I, I, or right now YouTube took away the the names, you know, they just yes. have the handles. <laughs> so yes. some of them I'm like, I don't know if I interacted with you or not because they have like a very <laughs> um, generic like profile picture and username. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, most sure. with a, like, like a distinguishing like photo or something, I, I tend sense. to recognize. Yeah, it makes sense to me. So I've, I finally put this um, buy lift together and I know you did the, the flame variant of, of Creator Swords. So I've got this this other other variant here and just just looking at her up close, I think I, I might have lucked out with you. There doesn't seem to be any any quality control issues on, on my one. But what I first noticed here is she's a lot paler, a lot paler than I thought she initially was. She is very yeah, yeah. milky I was, white. I'm trying to remember on the game. I think she was pretty pale in the game, though. But maybe you could uh, be right here. Yeah. Um, maybe the uh, promotional photos 
the lighting maybe made her skin a little less pale. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I'm I'm an absolute simp for like greenish blue hair, so straight away I knew I had to get some get Byleth on here. But there's some details on like the character that I didn't even recognize when I looked at the game. So for example, um, she's got one knee pad. <laughs> yeah, I didn't notice that either until the figure um, and the tassel too. That's um, on her chest there. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. This is something I recognize or remember much either. Yeah, no, no, you are right. And I think, I think I, there's some discrepancies here. So her hair is nicely colored in terms of the shading, the dark kind of blue, the kind of turquoise. But when you look at her kind of armor, it's a little bit monotone in terms of like the gray and, and the black. There's not as much shading as they put like into the cloak or into the hair. Yeah, I noticed that too um, with her, I guess the, the more, uh, I don't know what you'd call that, her, her top. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I do like how these um, sleeves are kind of flailing, flailing in the wind. But this, this is a very interesting design choice. Exposing the belly button. Is that so her belly button can breathe? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, no, overall as an aesthetic, it's definitely by lift. I definitely enjoy the feeling. But I think you almost have to have the flame variant on it to make it really stand out. You know, the kind of orange. The, the sword, yeah, the flame sword is, Yeah. I think, the showstopper. <laughs> or what really yes. elevates her. And it I think does. it really complements her hair to the, the contrast of right. colors. You are very, very right in that regard. And this, this gold choker straight away. I showed you that picture, right, of the, um, yeah. <laughs> of the other gold. <laughs> so, of the bleeding. That's, a, uh, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't happen <laughs> with all these Fingers figures. crossed. Fingers crossed. And these tights, I reckon they could have done a better job on, on this kind of design because it just kind of looks like tacked on. They look, yeah, kind of like cutouts. Then, yeah. you know, I guess what tights would really look like. Yeah. I'm not sure yeah. how they could have sculpted or painted that differently though. That's true, that's true, unless they did it in like kind of two layers. So if I was to I know you gave your, your ratings for, for this figure previously, but I would probably say like visually, from an aesthetic, from just looking at it, I'd probably give it maybe a, a four. With, with the orange sword. I haven't put it on yet. But I think Yeah, maybe you should put she... the orange sword on and see. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. See see how I, I feel. And about I thought the this. ball joint, um to change out the swords was interesting. Yeah, that is that is true. It's quite a heavy sword as well. So this board joint, uh, I'm wondering whether stability will last. The With time. the orange uh, sword, you're supposed to tuck it into one of the rocks. You're supposed to tuck this into one of the rocks. Yeah. Um, Behind the rock, or yeah, on top like of the rock, little... like sitting on it. Yeah, like it's like okay, that. Okay, okay, let's give it a go. So I am I am really really bad with fiddly figures. Like they go <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> It took me a while to position that one. So. so this is meant to tuck inside the crevice of that rock. Yeah. Like that? I think I think so. Yes, there. Okay, cool. Oh, in yeah, that case, so I think it that helps it a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense to me. It's better so, yeah, than vision. a support rod. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness, that's a, <laughs> that support rod. Like the there's a big um, a discussion in my my Discord at the moment around this new. Um, Miyamoto Musashi Berserker, I think it's Berserker figure that um, from the Fate Fate series, and <laughs> she looks so beautiful, so badass with her twin swords, and then a massive see-through support rod in the front. And, Is this the one based yeah. on the game? Yes, yes, the one based on the game. Okay, yeah, I saw photos of her. Yeah, those support rods are just hard. Um, I know, uh, I think Roy had one too. Yes, from Fire Emblem. So I was like, I think that was the reason why I didn't pre-order him. <laughs> ah. Ultimately. And um, they were a bit cheeky on this fate one because for the limited Japan um, bundled exclusive expensive box, they um, have this really cool purple flame dynamic and it actually hides the support rod, but that's exclusive to Japan. So, and you need to order the bundle in order to get that variant of it. Oh gosh. <laughs> Pandemonium. Yeah, the outcry for that one. Like, why? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. How do you feel about the very or the special parts that um, depending on which store you order from. Yeah, so it's it's very interesting because obviously the exclusives that you get for pre-ordering vary from depending on what platform and what store and even from the country. So the Japan variant of the Atelier Sophie 2 um, pre-order bonuses were different from the Western ones. And I think they were a lot better value for money and more kind of like good quality, if that makes sense. It had like a light up prism and it had like a, an art book 
and it had an exclusive kind of scroll and other things on it. And when I posted the uh, the video of it, people were like, how come my, my version doesn't have that? And I was like, where did you order it from? And obviously they ordered from America and I ordered it from uh, Japan. And yeah, I don't know why did it not consistent across the board? Because surely, you know, if something's good and quality, every collector yeah. wants it for that series. I, I do wonder if like, I know like in the music scene, they like to have different exclusives on different shops so that people just buy them all. They want to oh, collect them all. Yeah. But for figures um, though, I don't think a lot of people want to buy multiple figures. Yeah. So that's tricky. That's for, sure. um, for the Trail series, they all have um, exclusive face plates, which I haven't okay. dived into because it just would make the cost a lot more expensive <laughs> just for a face plate. That's true. <laughs> Ordering. I, I want to run an idea by you actually. Yeah. Like, um, so things like Nendoroids and the Trails figures with the exclusive face plates and even like stands, a lot of the figures, unlike the Family ones, you get generic, you know, see-through circular stand. How much of a market do you think there would be for like custom made bases or figures that you can hot swap for various figures to, you know, really get the character likeliness correct or really make the base dynamic and pop? How, how popular do you think that would get? I think it depends on the character. So if it's mm. a really popular character, I could see that happening. Because um, yes. with the custom bases, you know, it's hard to manufacture a bunch of those. And for mm. uh, you don't want to have it too uh, wide because you're going to have plenty of like leftover stock of the least yeah. popular one. Um, yep, yep. No, that's right. That's right. It's yeah. almost like it has to be made to order, like commission, uh, commission piece, isn't it? To yeah, that that would make it more expensive as well, but and time would. consuming um, if you want to, you know, uh, if you have a if you get a bunch of orders in all, all at once yeah that's whole. true that's true because like um a lot of these um big big kind of uh, figure <laughs> review channels i think the the limiting factor for their growth is the fact that there's only so many figures that you can get and display and review you know huge monetary issues and space issues so there comes a point where you've paid like what 300 400 500 dollars for an amazing amazing figure and you've run out of space so you're either gonna have to sell some or you know find a, a different alternative but what if you like you remember that show pimp my ride what if you pimp your figure and make it like <laughs> and really stand out with a custom base or a panorama well, I've thing seen or some, or... um there's actually this one japanese artist i follow on youtube where she uh, takes a lot of one piece figures and paints them in the style of like jojo Bizarre. Oh, M so cool. M A Man is it M A Man or someone like that? I think so. Yeah, I like yeah, her yeah. channel a lot. <laughs> She's cool. So She's it's cool, cool yeah. to see kind of those custom like repaints, but mm. you have to have the skills for that. Um, That's right. Maybe bases would be a bit more approachable for regular just figure collectors. It's it's true. She she takes like it's her and another guy called Taka as well who who I speak with. Mm -hmm. um, they they take cheap figures like prize figures and really pimp them up with that 2D, 3D Jojo kind of comic yeah, style yeah. effect. It looks so cool, doesn't it? It looks really cool. I think she had like an exhibit too. Like I was I was kind yeah. of casually following her in a book. <laughs> but I was like, oh, this is so neat. And she's got an unfair advantage compared to the others though, because she's, you know, she's quite generically quite pretty, right? So she's kind of transcending, yeah. trying to transcend the- um, She also kind of has English subtitles theme. in her videos. Yeah, too, yeah. Which I appreciate. That's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> <laughs> ah, no, speaking of that kind of area, there's um, a few other people I follow. Are you, do you know much about garage kits? A little bit. Um, I actually just got a model kit for the trail Ooh. stuff. So cool. to put together, that's a very simple one in comparison mm. to garage kits, but similar. Yeah, no, that, that'll <laughs> work. And like, because they're really kind of unique pieces, right? Because they're not mass produced and you've got to mm -hmm. con assemble them and paint them yourself or maybe get some you know, professional to, to paint them. And there's so much effort in that. You end up with a super valuable, super treasured piece, but only if like you can do it yourself, I'd say, because the cost is like really prohibitive to get a professional to do it. Have you, do you know the costs involved? The cost? Uh, no, but yeah. I'm sure it's expensive. Um, any kind a of custom small... thing. Yeah. One eight scale, a small one eight scale figure, quite generic, just sitting down, will set you back about one thousand eight hundred dollars to paint. Oh gosh! Right. That, that's yeah. That's that's that'd be hard to get into yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's um, I don't know. It seems like a very closed zone unless you're committed to painting it yourself, because the kit itself might be reasonable price, like two twenty thousand, thirty thousand yen or whatever. But paint, you know, getting a professional to paint it, oh la la, that's like <laughs> that's like yeah. a deposit on a car or something. And also, like just clipping the parts out and making it smooth, mm. right? That's that's difficult yeah. too. That's true. Uh, that's true. Skill. 
Yes, yes. And um, but fortunately for me, like um, I'm going to this event called Wonder Festival end of July, 30th of July. So I'm hoping to find like some really, really valuable kits to maybe I can purchase kits first and foremost, but also to like network to find the people who do the kind of painting and assembling and see if there's someone not at a top, top tier, but someone mid-range or at least affordable so I could get one of these done <laughs> because yeah, it's expensive yeah. to find. Maybe you can find someone who's starting out too. Yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> true. That needs to like build up their resume so they, they could be one of the, the top people. <laughs> that, that is a dream. Like I, I'm trying to um, approach a lot of the graduates from an art university in terms of, you know, people who want experience in the field and they will get paid for the work, but obviously they haven't established mm -hmm. themselves yet. So I'll give them like a platform and opportunity to, you know, show their skills, showcase their skills to the world and not just the Japanese world, but the, you know, the, the whole world. And in exchange, they're going to be doing a lot of these things. And maybe even we have an ongoing partnership or start a proper um, organization whereby, you know, Let's get let's get your your skill set out there. Let's make your persona. Let's make you well known. And in return, I get some beautiful display pieces. We can market them together and then get out there. You know, the community community and networking is a great thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's difficult, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's great when it works out. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And in terms of like the kind of RPG scene, who would you say are like your your favorite um, RPG YouTubers? Do you, do you watch anyone regularly? Or I, I know you communicate on Discord with some people. Who would you say are some people you're fairly close uh, to? I would say I'm friends with all the ones I've collabed with so far. Mm. Um, uh, Taylor from The Gaming Shelf was the first yes. one who reached out to me when I was a very Lovely small game. channel, which yep. I'm always grateful for. And um, um, all the uh, like advice he's offered me. Mm. Um, so yeah, I would say he's probably my closest friend and that sure. who does exclusively do um, JRPGs. I've also met a lot of other smaller YouTubers that are more okay. into like the collecting side, but they're still yeah. huge like JRPG fanatics. Mm. Um, like my friend Brandon from Just the Gems. I don't know if you've heard of him. Yeah, yet. I'm not aware. I'm aware of him. Yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 He's great, and um, his channel I think is starting to grow now, which is great. Yeah. No, he has that's a fun good. personality. He is, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. I, I completely agree. And in terms of like, your advice for, for that kind of growth stage, so when, when people are trying to establish themselves, get across their personality, improve their editing and, you know, uh, consistent delivery of content, what would be like, your key piece of advice from your experience on how they grow from, let's say, their 200, 300 views per video up until the thousands or, you know, multiple thousand views? Um, I guess the biggest thing to do is just to keep like it's very generic advice but just keep working at it um i think mm. the more practice you have like your first 50 or so videos are supposed to be kind of awful <laughs> if you will <laughs> but they're learning experiences um i would yeah. definitely like i'm always going to keep i think my older videos up even though they're very awkward and like i have no lighting or anything but it really just shows the growth of what sure. you can do with just um practicing uh, both yeah. Uh, with, I guess, the speaking part, the editing part, mm. and getting kind of the camera and everything, the setup right. Mm. Uh, but it, it really does take time. Um, you don't, I, I would say you don't want to go into YouTube and try to get a ton of like subscribers right away because that could be mm -hmm. overwhelming and it's, I think, hard Depressing. to meet ex expectations at that point. Yeah. You kind of want to build an audience so that they kind of grow with you yes, over, slowly yes. over time. It's probably Absolutely. the best strategy. Always a thrilling session from Emily. Unfortunately, we had to cut the session short because a little phone call accident with the kids and some snail shells. Dramatic. But on the next episode, Emily goes all in on Korean K-pop, J-pop, the absolute idol scene. My goodness, I did not know I had a soulmate in terms of the Asia pop fandom. <laughs> Emily is such a legend. You guys will really enjoy that stay tuned hope you guys enjoy that content make sure to like and subscribe it really helps this video get seen until next time guys peace